Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so, I come to you with a very quick video. These are my top books of 2019. I am not going to talk about any of them in much detail here for a couple of reasons. One being that I have to actually uh, leave in about 10 minutes for the airport to fly to New York for the holidays. Um, I had a lot going on today um, that you know, I, I meant to do this earlier and to record a more extensive video, but I just had a lot going on today that kept me from, uh, from, from recording a lengthy video because I had to, like, clean my apartment and such. And I'm also just feeling a little bit drained from other things that I won't go into, but, um, I've also talked about most of these books elsewhere at length. Um, and most of them, if I haven't already talked about them at length, I will talk about them at length at some point. Um, so, yeah. You're just gonna have to settle for me just sort of rattling them off for you, um, and, uh, without really much comment, and, but if you have thoughts or comments on any of these, uh, then I would, of course, always love to hear. I will, at some point, I'm having a hard time with annotations because of <laughs> complicated reasons, um, but, uh, I, I will try to leave links to videos where I have discussed these books at length, if I have yet which in, like, all but, I think, two cases I have. Um, so we're gonna start with the fiction, um, and as you all know, I define fiction a bit broadly to include, you know, plays, epic poems, and such. So, um, these aren't all novels, in fact, uh, only half of them are novels, but, uh, anyway, these are the best made-up stories, to use Steve Donahue's term, uh, that I have read this year. Um, so coming in at number six, we have, uh, Mahabharata, a modern retelling by Carol Satyamurti. A translation of the ancient Indian epic, uh, published in 2013, I believe, um, 2015, so that's number six. Number five is The Road, the Pulitzer Prize winning novel by Cormac McCarthy, which was published in 2004, I believe. Um, coming in at number, uh, three, four, four, sorry. The Road was number five. I don't know if I said that, but next one is number four. Um, this is The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton, my first Edith Wharton, and it was awesome. Uh, coming in at number three, um, Wit by Margaret Edson. Coming in at number two, we have Angels in America by Tony Kushner. And this last one is the one book on this list that you can say without a doubt I have not talked about really at all. It, and I, that's because I only just read it. It was a buddy read with Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, he heard me rave about it in a Voxer message. It's uh, Haji Murad by Leo Tolstoy. His very last slim novel. Uh, just incredible. I cannot wait to read more Tolstoy. But somehow I have a hard time seeing his other works topping this one. Um, so, alright. Um... Moving on to nonfiction. Uh, so once again, so in this case there are seven, uh, seven nonfiction books. I read a lot of great nonfiction this year. I had to leave out some really good books just because they didn't quite have the spark for me. There, the, if in order for a book to be on one of these like lists, there needs to be a, a a spark when I think about them, some sort of um, great insight that I got from them or just some brilliant, I don't know, brilliant aspect to it, whether it be the narrative drive of the book, uh, the writing, the characterization, um, you know, uh, whether it expanded my horizons, gave me new insights, what have you. Um, it needs to s initiate some sort of spark like that, no matter how objectively great a book it is, if you can, if you can judge a book objectively, which is a whole debacle that I won't go into here. Um, so yeah, there are really good books that I had to leave off both lists. Um, uh, although I had a stronger nonfiction than fiction year, I will say. Um, but anyway, uh, without further ado, I will get to the nonfiction. This also is going to constitute my response to uh, Samuel Darum's tag. He had a tag that was the top five nonfiction books of 2019, um, which is, uh, I, I, if I get around to annotations, I will leave a link to his video. Um, but uh, uh, his tag was just, you know, name your top five nonfiction books that you read in 2019. I think he focuses mostly on new releases, but obviously, as you all know, I don't read that many new releases, so I do not. Um, so anyway, in uh, ascending order, we have my top seven nonfiction books. Um, the first one being um, the one I've talked about the least, but I just mentioned it the other day. I'm going to be doing a whole video about it. 
It's uh, Empire of the Summer Moon, Quanah Parker, and the Rise and Fall of the Comanches, the most powerful Indian tribe in American history, by S.C. Gwynn. Um, there was only one major quibble with this book that I had, um, aside from the rather ungainly subtitle. Um, there's only one major quibble that I had, which you will all be learning about in the video I made, that my, my brother and I are going to make a video on this. You'll be learning about it, that quibble, in this, um, in that video, and that's the only reason it's so low. It probably would have been higher if it hadn't been for that one quibble. Um, uh, but yeah, a really engaging narrative history. Um, okay, I said I wasn't going to comment. <laughs> uh, number, uh, six, uh, we have, um, Young Ovid, A Life Recreated by Diane Middlebrook. Her uh, lovely biography of y Ovid, the poet of the, uh, who wrote the Metamorphoses, uh, uh, narrating the events of his younger years, or what we can know of those events. So, that's that. Um, number uh, five. Yes, number five. Uh, we have A Mad Love, An Introduction to Opera by Vivian Schweitzer. Um, <laughs> I talk about opera, opera enough. I don't really need to further comment on this book, do I? Um, number, uh, four, uh, a new, this is the one, uh, new release. I think it's the only, oh no, this, this book was released just last year, but this one is a real new release. This is, um, The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee, Native America from 1890 to the Present by David Troyer. Um, number three, we're getting into the heavy hitters. This is, uh, Illness as Metaphor and AIDS and its Metaphors by Susan Sontag. Um, number two, we have Behave. The Biology of Humans at Our Best and Worst by Robert Sapolsky, which is another one you've heard me talk about time and time again. And then finally, uh, we have uh, Sapiens, number one, Sapiens, a brief, a brief History of Humankind by Yuval Noah Harari. Um, yeah, so anyway, this was these were not easy lists. Well, the number one spot on the fiction list was pretty clear, right, from when I finished the book, but the the rest of the rankings and what books to include were not easy. Um, I I have had a great reading month, as you can see. A lot of these books are books I've read recently, especially in the fiction, because um, up until this month I wasn't actually having a very great fiction reading year um, until I threw in some last minute gems. So um, anyway, uh, again, as always, I welcome your comments on any of these books. I'm sorry that I couldn't do a more extensive video. But uh, I am too eager to get this video out and won't really have time to do it while I'm home for the holidays because I'll be in a house full of people. Um, well, not full of people, but with, you know, people in it. Um, so anyway, I am going to leave it there. Um, I uh, hope you are all having a nice day and uh, I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.